Now, what is the mechanism of how the bone is going to get formed and how the bone, bone is going to get resorbed out based on the osteoblasts and osteoclasts. Now, consider this is your bone, here we have the bone, we have osteoblasts which is there in the bone. This osteoblast uh, as we already know is going to be uh, uh, decrease the is going to decrease the bone resorption whereas osteoclast is going to increase the bone resorption. But how osteoclast is going to get activated? It is activated by the osteoblasts. Osteoblast in turn is going to release out rank L molecules. This rank L molecules is going to sit on certain receptors on the inactive osteoclasts. We have the osteoclasts. It is going to sit on certain receptors on the surface of osteoclasts. When this rank L goes and sits on it, this osteoclast gets activated and it is going to cause bone resorption. For this activation, it needs certain other interleukins and those are interleukin 1 and interleukin cis. Interleukin 1 and cis is going to increase the activation of this osteoclast and this osteoclast is going to be formed which is further going to cause increase in the bone resorption. Whereas osteoblasts when it is involved directly is going to decrease bone resorption, is going to decrease bone resorption. We have one another negative point and that negative point is osteoblasts also increases the production of OPG molecules. OPG molecules means osteoprotegerin molecules, osteoprotegerin molecules. These osteoprotegerin molecules has got inhibitory activity on rank L molecules, which means uh, osteoblasts increases the production of rank L by which it is going to cause uh, uh, bone resorption and osteoblast itself is going to decrease the bone resorption and osteoblast also not only produces rankyl also produces the opposite activity of rankyl osteoprotegerin is further going to inhibit the rankyl molecules. So for uh, 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 preventing the bone resorption you should uh, prevent the osteoclastic activity or osteoclastic activation and for uh, increasing the bone uh, uh, for, pre for uh, preventing the bone resorption we have to increase the activity of osteoblastic activity also clear. Now we have uh, uh, three different uh, uh, drug groups which can, which can be used right now, vitamin D3, we have calcitonin and we have parathyroid hormones. Calcitonin has got opposite actions in every individual areas. It has got good action on osteoblasts and it has got bad action on osteoclasts which means it is going to break down the osteoclasts and is going to increase the osteoblasts. If osteoblastic activity is increased, it decreases bone resorption which means what is going to happen to the calcium? All the calcium is going to move into the bones and it is going to get stored upon so blood calcium is going to fall down. That is why do not call it as calcitonin, call it as calcilonin because it decreases the serum calcium. Clear? Calcitonin is a calcilonin molecule, it decreases the serum calcium levels. What about the next one? Parathyroid hormones. Parathyroid hormones and we have calcitriol. Both of these drugs will act at a receptor which is located on the surface of the osteoblasts, will act at certain receptors on the surface of osteoblasts and because of its action there is going to be increased rank L expression. Because of increased rank L expression there is going to be increased osteoclastic activity. Osteoblast also directly has the tetracity. Both of these just tend to cause stimulation of osteoblast, which means both action can be possible, right? It might increase osteoclastic activity or it might increase osteoblastic activity. So, because of it, there is going to be increased new bone formation or decreased bone resorption, which means there is going to be more osteoblastic activity. There are two different possibilities which is uh, available, but especially which is common with the uh, parathyroid hormone. So, how do we uh, uh, categorize it? This activity will be high whenever parathyroid hormone is given at continuous and high doses. Whereas, this action that is uh, uh, osteoblastic activity will be seen more when parathyroid hormone is given at intermittent and low doses. Clear guys? So, the most important factor among these two is this osteoclastic activity is most important for parathyroid hormones activity. Concept clearer guys? Now, we have seen about the basics of how the bone is getting formed and how the bone is getting metabolized and all the other different mechanisms.